The Old Testament approves of only monotheistic belief and worship. This belief is, is reinforced or highlighted through one, the use of singular verbs and pronouns for God, and direct statements regarding God's wonders. I mean, I've read some many, these are, these are you know, PowerPoints are supposed to be just one. I, I, I wrote some things, so to this particular. Singular verbs, if you read the book of, if you read Genesis 1, for example, I don't know, God said, God said, um, singular verbs. And we also find similar pronouns. For example, Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 10, it says, I am he. And Isaiah 42, 8, I am the Lord, and that is my name. How many, many, many things do we find this one? Singular nouns. So the, singular, the use of singular pronouns for God throughout scripture shows that there is only one true God, and that is the God of his life. There are also direct statements. For example, Isaiah 45 says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. And all that is the computer data. And also, of course, Exodus in, in, in the law. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods beside me for me. So God is one, very clear. And this is most common, of course. Some people say, that means that the, the God is one. So why do we talk about uh, Father and Christ and uh, Holy Spirit as God? Yeah, all is vital. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Moses teaches here clearly that Yahweh, the God of Israel, is one. Unlike surrounding cultures who may have believed in, in pantheons with many gods, Israel has only one God. That's, but how do we understand one? The Hebrew now aside actually means one. But it also conveys a notion of unity, not just one. So for example, when Exodus 24 says, all of the, the congregation of Israel answered in one voice. Mm. One person didn't speak, right? All of them spoke. Yes, we will do it. And that is one. Mm. Then when uh, you know, a married couple, of course, of the married couple of opposite sex, I mean, mm. not, not the same, they are one flesh. Mm. But they are two, right? Since this word allows for a plurality in oneness, Deuteronomy 6 needs not be understood. It does not have to be understood automatically to preclude a plurality within the one God of Israel. What this verse does actually is to prohibit Israel from recognizing and worshiping the gods of Canaan. So in verses 10 to 15 it says, Israel is commanded to fear and serve Yahweh alone, as certain that Yahweh is the only true, true God. So in context, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 is not intended to enumerate divine persons constituting God. Maybe let me uh, I'm not careful that I don't give my time. While the Old Testament does not explicitly present the Godhead as consistent of three persons, is the description of the oneness of God nowhere precludes by default in the conceptions of Godhead or Trinity. So we find passages, you know, when the Old Testament stresses God's oneness, it is a oneness that is presented against the other gods of mm. Canaan, mm. not a oneness that is counting the persons within God. I think that that, that has, these texts are all sometimes being used uh, wrongly. So the contrast is never between a one-person God and a three-person God. Then point number two, 